easily one of the most asked questions that I get or things that I see that are wrong that somebody can fix very simply is their transducer placement. And transducers are really important because it's your eyes under the water. And a lot of guys don't realize a great unit with the transducer in the wrong location or mounted improperly is going to be the difference between seeing and not seeing. So a few simple steps are going to make sure that you get this where you need it and things to consider. We're going to show you some tips and tricks. Each and every boat is going to be different as far as where the proper location is at. But to run a skimmer like this, you're going to get the best sensitivity, the best eyes, if you will, under the water. And for me, you want to look at things that you're not mounting near rivet lines if you have an aluminum boat or chines or anything that's going to move or make air bubbles. So right hand rotation or your prop, things like that. You want to avoid those things whenever possible. So drains, anything on your boat. So we're going to mount this skimmer and show you where it works best on a Ranger 600 series boat. So we want to check to make sure that we get that clamshell approximately in the middle because this bracket has a little bit of travel, but we want to get right where we approximately think we're going to be and we want to make a mark using a straight edge to determine where that middle of the clamshell or bottom of the boat is. So the next step is we're going to mark the holes to drill and we want to be, since we, we don't know if we need to adjust up or down in the future, we want to just mark those holes right in the center so we have the ability to go up or down based on what we, our original mark was. Now much like installing tracks, after you drill the holes, you're going to want to put a little angle or chamfer on there just to make sure that that fiberglass doesn't split out or crack over time as you secure it. Now that I'm happy with the height and the angle, making sure that everything is where I think I want it to be, which is just above level with the boat, slightly kicked up in the rear, and level from the left and the right as you look at it. I'm gonna go ahead and secure it by hand, again, so I don't over tighten it or move it. Once I'm happy with the mounting location and I've got it secured into the boat, then I go and put the nylock nut on, use the little Allen wrench on one side and a 7 16 wrench on the other and we're going to secure this transducer so the angle cannot change. Next what we need to do is we need to secure the transducer wire cable all the way up to the boat so that the waves, wind, everything else doesn't grab this and move it around. So I use a small truss screw, this is a half inch, in conjunction with a little keeper which these will come like with the Hummingbird, but I put quite a few extras in there, so you can buy these at, the, at hardware stores. And we're going to drill a hole and we're going to put a countersink in just like we did with any hole in the fiberglass and on the transducer itself, and we're going to fill that with silicone. So again, to avoid stripping the head of the screw, I like to finger tighten these. And if you index the right size bit for the screw that you're using, it should be very easy to do.
transducers certainly are not a flashy or fancy thing, but they are your eyes below the water, and they make a huge difference. And my ability to mark fish at 30, 40 miles an hour is all done by these little tricks and tips that we showed you here. So electronics are important, but just because you have good electronics, if you don't give it the proper way to see what it needs to see, you aren't going to have good electronics.